Hi, I'm Indiani Jones from my YouTube channel, Indiani Jones. I love to craft and create and uh, I do it with a bit of a twist. You see, I love to dress up in characters because I have so many wigs and costumes and oh, I should explain, I'm also an independent film actress. So as well as being a mom and a full-time grant writer and YouTuber, I just love to share my adventures in crafting. I love shabby chic and dark academia, light academia, cottage core, goblin core, fairy core, any kind of core that's out there. I love exploring new, different aesthetics and trying to figure out how to be resourceful with the materials we already have, like scrap fabrics. What can we make out of this tiny little piece of fabric? It's not even enough to make a kerchief for my head, but I can make a beautiful, romantic, shabby chic flower like this just in time for spring. So it's easy enough to do and doesn't require a lot of materials. Let's get started. Grab your scrappy stash because we're going to make some beautiful scrappy flowers that are perfect for spring. And of course, these are also perfect for your shabby chic, French country, cottage core decor. And I just wanted to go through all the different ways of making these beautiful fabric flowers. So this first one, I'm using some like burlap fabric or cotton fabric. It's wonderful because it gets very um, shaggy um, in the end. So all I did was fold a piece of fabric that was around five inches wide, fold it in half, and glue it on one side. Now I'm just cutting fringe on the other edge, and now I'm going to just you know like scrappy it up I guess I don't know shabby it up and I'm using my nails in this technique there are many different techniques and you'll see the different techniques that I use in this tutorial now I'm going to roll up all of that fringy wonderful scrappy fabric and I'm using a paintbrush to just get it started and as you can see later on all I'm using is the hot glue gun and just rolling it upon itself over and over again. And this is a wonderful way to make a center to any flower that you create. Um, and again, just continuously fluff it out as you glue it up. So this is a shabby chic layered flower. So all we're doing is the same technique over again. Again, five inches wide, and it's probably around a foot long. It could be longer. It, it, it's up to you, but around a foot is long enough to create a very nice shabby chic flower. Again, all I'm doing is fringing the end, uh, the ends, and then just making it all shabby and distressed. I'm distressing it. I'm getting it distressed. It's worried about taxes and bills and all that stuff. That's I'm distressing my fabric. That's what I'm doing. I'm talking harshly to it. No, I'm not. I'm just rubbing my nails against it. And then I'm just, what happens to me when I do these voiceovers? I don't know, but I have fun. Anyway, now I'm just going to add that beautiful, colorful fabric. It's a remnant that I bought at um, Hobby Lobby, I think. And I wrapped it around and now I'm just flattening it out. And I'm going to add a little embellishment with my, look how pretty, I have my little buttons all organized. I have, a, I'm very proud of my button collection. Don't ask me why, but I really love my button collection. So I found a little button that matches the fabric perfectly. And it's just a lovely little country touch to this shabby chic flower. I love it. There'll be other embellishments along the way, but there you go. Look how cute. I love it. <laughs> For this next technique, you're going to need at least two feet of satin or silk or taffeta or even um, chiffon if you'd like. And all I'm doing is it's five and a half inches wide and two feet long. And what I'm doing is rolling it into like two inches wide. And you can make it as wide or as you like, but I think two inches is it's good enough. And all I'm doing is rounding the edges. So those square edges, I'm making sure to round them off because obviously these are going to become petals. I love this technique. It is so easy. It's no so whatsoever. No so, no glue. It's fantastic. And you get to use fire. So you round off, yeah, I know, right? You round off both sides and then you cut down about an inch into um, the petals just to, and and also I would even it out. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm evening it out, evening it out, evening it out, evening it out, evening or whatever, evening it out. And there you have me, the cuts. You can see the cuts are about an inch in. And there you see your beautiful, wonderful feathers. Now I took 
two skewers, uh, taped them together, and I even used a uh, clip at the end to help me gather this up. Look how cool this is. This is the coolest. Um, I've seen other people use hairpins, but I, it's not long enough for me. This was uh, the perfect length, especially if you're going to make a nice, big, fluffy uh, flower. This, again, is a beautiful, shabby, chic flower. And you can use this on anything, on your you know, wreaths, on your dresses even. Oh my gosh, the things you can do with these wonderful, shabby, chic fabric flowers. It's endless, endless, I tell you, especially for spring. So here I am clipping off the ends, and now it's time for fire! Fire! Yes! put it in the fire, burn it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not burning it. I'm actually holding it up. You can't tell, but the candle is pretty much worn down and I'm holding the fabric up around two inches above the flame. And what I'm doing is singeing the ends so that it doesn't fray. Yes, I know we're doing shabby chic flowers. We like frayed edges, but for this, it does something magical because of the fabric, the satin or taffeta or whatever it is that you're using chiffon, it actually curls up. Look at this, look at the difference from one side to another see how it curls up the beautiful petals and it just it gives it such life and dimension you definitely want to do this when you make your shabby flowers and yes I know we like the frayed edges but this it just edges it so beautifully and makes such a difference like I said look at look at the difference between the two it does shrink it a little bit and that's why I like it nice and wide but it also adds so much body and so much life to this flower. It, it actually does make it more lifelike. If it singes a little bit, you can just cut that off and you'll be fine if it gets brown. But sometimes people like it because it gives it a bit, a bit of a vintage look. Now you can use zip ties, you can use wire, you can use whatever you like. Here I'm just using a thin ribbon to tie up the flower right in the center. And that's what creates the flower and the petals look how easy i mean you can very easily watch a tv show a movie while you make a bunch of shabby chic flowers like this one and it's just so elegant especially with the satin fabric just beautiful love it love it love it. i'm having issues tying this with my nails but there i got it done and last but not least this beautiful shabby chic totally dazzled embellishment right at the center of your flower doesn't it make it perfect oh i love it i really enjoy making these flowers for you today Here's another fun flower you can use with um, scraps that are cotton. I love it. Look at this fabric. Isn't this perfect? I found this scrap. It was a remnant at Hobby Lobby and then I couldn't find the actual fabric because I wanted to buy more, but I had just enough to make a flower. So what you're going to do is make three inch circles. And for this project, I suggest you make six. You can make more if you like or less, but I wouldn't go any less than five or six. So this one is going to use six and this is going to be another layered shabby chic flower. So here all I'm doing is making very tiny little, um, what do you call it? Um, st stitches? Yeah, tiny little stitches with my very long uh, needle and just stringing it through and you would do it on the open edge on the rounded edge and it is so cool because as you sew together or stitch together the rounded edge it actually brings the straight edge and makes it rounded i know it sounds weird but it works now here i just decided okay let's change it up so you can see more of the roses again all i'm doing is these tiny tiny little stitches i hope you can see very little stitches and again this is another project that you can literally sit and watch your favorite tv movie or even just sit outside and enjoy a beautiful sunset while you create these wonderful shabby chic flowers i love this technique i think it's absolutely beautiful and it just has a, a wonderful effect at the end so as you go along and you take your circles and you sew them together you're just going to gather them together and that's what's going to become your petals. Each one of these little circles that you half and then stitch are going to become beautiful petals for this wonderful little flower that you can see right there below me. And that's why I say it's you know usually best to do at least five, if not six. Six creates a fuller flower, but you can also continuously stitch and add more petals and actually wrap them around and around each other creating a, like a type of shabby chic rose um, but for this i just decided to layer two different types of fabrics that were that coordinated 
but again they're different types of fabric one's a little more plain and this is a little more decorative because of the print and all I'm going to do now is stitching them together um, stitching them in the middle so that it holds and now I'm putting it on top of another flower that I believe had four inch or four and a half inch uh, petals or rounds that I had sewed together now here I was like indecisive like do I do a button a simple little country button or do I embellish it again with totally dazzled because it's totally dazzling and I went with totally dazzled I mean you blame me look at it I love it this one is so cute as well and again use it as a pin use it as anything you like especially for spring okay so here is the purple flower that you saw in my intro and all I'm doing here is I had cut squares in different sizes and now I'm rounding them off. It's very easy to just fold it in half and fold it in half again into quarters and just round it off to make a circle. Then once I have it folded, I just cut in about an inch to create the petals on each side. So I fold it in half and then the other half that I'm going to fold into a quarters right there, I'm just going to go cut in about an inch, no more than that because you don't want your flower to fall apart. So here I'm showing you that I'm going to use 16 circles and these circles are five and a half inches, four and a half inches and three and a half inches. Once you have all four cut in the different sizes and you know cut in circles and then made the petals, yes we're using fire once again, I know. I know it's dangerous with Annie to have an open flame, but you know, you got to take some risks to make something beautiful, I swear. So again, all I'm doing here is holding it around two inches above the flame. I'm not sticking it in the flame. It looks like that from this vantage point, but no, it's just above the flame to heat it up and make sure that those petals curl. Look at how they curl up. So it singes it, it stops it from fraying and it curls it up. And oh my gosh, when you put all of the petals together, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. So again, I'm going to sew this through, but you can, you can easily glue it in the middle with hot glue gun each petal. But I think this is much easier just to gather it up and stitch it straight in the middle and then add some embellishments. With this one, I wanted to be a little simpler and also I have a big stash of humongous Dollar Tree pearls that I bought and I haven't done much with. So I said, you know what? Let's use one of those big uh, ginormous plastic pearls from the Dollar Tree. And there you is, there it is, there you is, there it is, strung up already on the um, thread that I'm just sewing through the middle of this amazing flower. I fell in love with this flower and again you can make them as big as you want you can make them even thicker I went with 16 um, pieces of fabric again four four and four uh, 16 is that 16 four four no it's 12 but you can go with 16 you can make a smaller circle in the very very middle so I'm sorry I, it's, it's 12 pieces of fabric four of each size and there's three sizes This next one has a beautiful fabric. I love this fabric, but again, I could only find a remnant of it left over here at Hobby Lobby. So it was very inexpensive. I think I paid less than a dollar for this piece of fabric. So I'm taking the fabric, I'm doubling it up and dividing it up in three because I'm going to make um, six circles. Yes, <laughs> three times two is six. Okay, so I'm going to make six circles and these are going to become the petals of this wonderful shabby chic flower. Once again, an easy way to make a circle is dividing or, you know, folding the square in half and folding it in half again and just making it a circle. It's not perfect, but again, it doesn't matter. It's shabby chic. It doesn't have to be perfect. So this is a much faster technique to shabby up or distress your fabric just using a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. Now, I don't use a sanding block for anything else except for fabric, so it doesn't have any remnants or leftover of anything else, of wood or anything else that I'm using, and it keeps it clean. Now, I'm taking one of the circles, folding it in half, and then fanning it, um, kind of cinching it in the middle to create a base. Now, what I'm using is a piece of burlap fabric as the base, or you can also use felt or any kind of fabric in, as the base or as the bottom of this and it's just a very simple two inch circle or three inch circle at the bottom of this uh, flower. Now I'm doing the same with all of the circles. I'm cinching them together in the middle to create these petals. 
I used two as the base, as you can see already, one covering one half of that circle and the other covering the other half. And these are going to be added as petals in between. It's very easy to do. Again, this is all no, no sew whatsoever. It's all using just glue. And as you can see, it's a really cute idea. And of course, we're going to add some embellishment in the middle. And I found this wonderful lace and it was right after Valentine's Day, I believe that I found this and I just loved the, the color and the design of the little hearts. So I'm going to gather this up and create a little circle for the middle of my flower. And this is easy enough. I'm using wax paper or parchment paper underneath so I don't get, you know, glue all over the floor or all over my, all over the floor. I'm not on the floor, but it looks like a floor all over my desk. And I'm just gathering it up with my nails and a toothpick or a skewer so I don't completely burn my fingertips. I, I do somewhat, but, you know, just a little bit. I know I have those little fingertip things, but I don't know if it's because of my nails, but they don't seem to stay on or if my, like finger ends are too skinny but uh yeah those little those little rubber things they just fall off all the time so so here i am just finishing up that beautiful little embellishment for the center of our little shabby chic flower and i love these colors they're so pretty and springy and happy and the white lace just adds to it and again we're going to add an embellishment in the middle don't worry, I'm not gonna use Totally Dazzled this time. I, I wanted to leave it a little more country-like. So I, again, oh, here's another way to shabby chic your flower at the end. I'm just, you know, even though I did it for each of the petals, I just did a little touch at the end and then fluff it up. Fluff it, fluff it, fluff it. You gotta fluff it up so it's nice. And, and there I'm trying to separate the flowers so it can create more volume. And there is the flower with a little button embellishment in the center. Once again, we're going to use satin or organza. That's what I'm using in this example is crystal organza. First, I'm going to create a bud, a little rosebud. And all I'm doing is taking a, an aluminum foil ball and covering in satin in a similar color. It could have been the organza as well, but I wanted to use satin. Now I'm taking some fabric, I'm doubling it up, and I'm folding that in half. And I'm going to make jelly beans. Yes, I'm going to make jelly beans in graduated sizes from three inches all the way to five inches. And if you don't understand or you can't imagine what a jelly bean looks like cut in fabric, that's what I'm looking for. It's like an elongated, um, it's not an oval, it's a jelly bean. I don't know how else to say it, it's a jelly bean. And here I am just singeing the edges with fire, fire. This is the fire episode for Annie of <laughs> making flowers with fire. Yes, that's what I'm going to call it, making flowers with fire. And basically, once again, I'm singeing the ed edges with the heat and not necessarily just like firing them up and burning them because it will burn the fabric. And unless you want to have that burnt look, you don't know, maybe that's what you're looking for. But I just want to heat it up to singe the fabric so it stops fraying. So there you can see those are the three inch circles or the three inch um, jelly beans and four inch and five inch. And you can see how I have them graduated. Now we're going to start with the smallest jelly beans first. It sounds weird, jelly beans, but yeah, okay, it's springtime jelly beans. And we're just going to cover the uh, rosebud, um, the center of the rosebud with these jelly bean um, petals, rose petals. And as you can see, you can cover each side of the of the rose bud. Now, as you continue adding, make sure that you cinch the petals as you add them to the rose bud. Little by little, just cinch them in and then make sure that you turn them out. Again, you're going to use the um, inside part of the jelly bean. I don't know if you can tell right there. It's the inside part of the jelly bean that I am gluing to the rosebud part. So the rounded part of the jelly bean is actually what becomes the rose petals. And again, remember to cinch them in so it creates more volume. You can make these roses as large as you want. And um, again, you can even mix the fabrics between satin and silk and the organza. And that also is a beautiful effect. But here you have the rose, we're coming to the end of it. And again, you can embellish the middle. I, I left it plain but you could embellish the middle if you like. And here is your beautiful handmade organza rose. I think it came out perfect, don't you? I love it. 
Here's a wonderfully easy shabby chic flower. First, I'm going to take some burlap and I'm just gonna rip it apart. It's probably around um, 24 inches long and around an inch to an inch and a half wide. After I have ripped it apart, I'm going to fray it even more. Be frayed, be very, very frayed. Yes, this is totally shabby chic and yeah, I know that was silly. But anyway, I'm using that block once again and I have a piece of felt or cardstock, you can use either one, as my base for this flower. Here I am rolling it together. What I did was I, I folded it in half so all the frayed edges come to the top and those are what's going to become the petal. And all I'm going to do is swirl it around on this circle base to make it the size of that base all about the base anyway here I am just um, you know again circling it around gluing it down and as I do I am also trying to gather it as well to give it some more life so it's not just you know a round piece of fabric I'm gathering it up and cinching it to the base uh, fabric or cardstock again I believe this is two feet long and uh, about an inch and a half to two inches wide once again I'm taking that block and as you can see really really fraying the edges and making it beautifully shabby chic now it doesn't end there because I mean how could it you have to add more embellishments and of course fluff it out I have this beautiful and again the burlap fabric and this beautiful lace is from burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs yeah I haven't used them in a while I forgot to have this stuff stashed away um, so now I'm gathering the lace and adding it and gluing it with the hot glue gun to the back of that round that I had. And again, I cut the lace was so wide, it's around six inches wide. I cut it in half to be able to use it for this project. And I believe it's just around 12, uh, I mean, 24 inches long and six inches wide. And there you have it, a beautifully embellished shabby chic rose and i can use this for a tassel i can use this on a hat box i can use this in so many ways and of course adding a little bit of dazzle with totally dazzled it's from totally dazzle.com woof i love this it's so pretty for this flower i'm combining four different flat fabrics satin burlap lace and i think it's upholstery um, material and it, it you'll see why it's important that I tell you it's upholstery material because it's a little too thick for this one project again I'm cutting down the burlap and I am fraying it once again um, now I'm taking I just left that as a square and I might change it later but here again I'm taking that cotton fabric which it really wasn't cotton it was um, what you call it uh, upholstery fabric and using I cut into it and made it some fringe and then again frayed it using my sanding block and I took some lace and then I took some of this satin and again I used the um, heat to bind the edges so it wouldn't fray now I'm trying to put this all together and I'm putting in a button in the middle and I'm using one of those mini little rubber bands that you use for like uh, your hair and I was trying to create a flower by using this rubber band and the button method. And I'll tell you something. I mean, I did it, as you can see, and here I am fraying it again, but it was very, very hard to get um, the rubber band around all of that fabric because the fabric was very thick. And now again, I'm using one of my little country-like buttons and putting that right in the middle instead of, and you can see that I was going to use more of the upholstery fabric, but it was just too thick to put in that rubber band. So this method, it works. It's not easy, but it works. But now I'm going to do the same method with thinner fabric. So here I'm using satin and lace and tulle in coordinating colors. Once again, I'm taking the satin, rounding it out this is like a technique you're gonna use this whole time while you're doing all of these flowers and I hope you try this out for the long weekend this is fun to do and, and God forbid it starts raining this weekend but if it does you have something fun to do with all these flowers try this out with all of your remnants that you have at home and get the kids involved some of these are so easy to do so here I am cutting the petals out of the satin fabric as you saw I folded it in half and folded it in half again and made six little petals now, same thing again, I'm going to go back and I'm going to singe the edges. Now, I made little circles out of my lace 
and I'm just going to cut a little divot just like this as you can see and that's going to create more of a petal look for the edges as well easy to do with um, any kind of lace if it's wide enough and there you have it and I'm sorry for the wood grain but I thought maybe you would be able to see the tool better and there I'm cutting the tool there I have two layers of tool the same thing circles and then cutting the edges to make um, little feathered out uh, petals now here I had already singed some of that satin fabric and now I'm just layering satin lace satin tool Oh, here I, I'm singeing it here sorry I was just trying to figure out how I was going to layer them and again just holding it over the heat to singe those petals just so that they can curl up a little bit and give a little bit of dimension to your flower try not to burn it because it will turn brown or black or go on fire and we don't want that don't do that and don't let the children do this either because they will burn their fingers eventually they will stick their fingers too too close to, it happened to me okay and if you're wearing nail polish you can catch fire your nails will catch on fire we don't want that so we're going to layer the fabrics once again i did satin tool lace satin tool lace satin tool lace and again in varying sizes i think i started from five inches or five and a half inches all the way to three inches and now i'm gathering them all together with a button in the middle and using that mini tiny little rubber band that you use again for your braids i am just collecting all the fabrics together and cinching them together to create this wonderful shabby chic flower and this is easy to do you don't have to sew you can do this any anywhere you you have fire and and scissors you can basically do this with any kind of fabric and here i am trying to find the center and again i'm going to use one of those totally dazzled embellishments right there in the middle and i thought this pearl one was perfect with this beautiful purple i love this purple satin that i found and again i the satin i had very long piece of this purple satin but it was only around uh, a foot wide so this was a perfect project for this i hope you try this one out as well So what do you think? You think you're going to try to make your own shabby chic flower? I hope you do. And I hope you share with me on Instagram at Jones one And as I say goodbye, as I always do to my friends, old and new, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. Let's see you again soon. And please stop by and visit my channel, Indiani Jones. Fun. Thanks for stopping by again. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope I see you back for more. Remember to subscribe so you're always updated with the next newest idea 